We were challenged by the Whiskey Cove to do our top 10 whiskeys. No, no, dream whiskeys. Our top 10 dream whiskeys. We were challenged by the Whiskey Cove to... The Whiskey Cove. You'll get it eventually. I know. We were challenged by the Whiskey Cove to go over our top 10 dream whiskeys. We're going to do this each individually, so I'm going to go first, and you can see the next video on Wednesday. My first whiskey is BTAC Weller. So that's W... Uh, William L. Weller? William LaRue? William LaRue Weller. That's what it is. It's a cast strength Weller product. It's a weeded bourbon. And everything I've ever heard about it sounds amazing. If I could have any of the BTEC line, it would be that one. In fact, I'm not even really interested in the rest. It's just that one. Now, the Whiskey Cove had several dream, like, unicorn whiskeys on his list. I have a few on here. That's really the main one, though. Some of these are actually readily available. I could probably just go get it, but I just haven't spent the money or really want to spend the money yet on those bottles. My second bottle, I'm not even sure if I'm going to say this right, is Ardbeg Udal. I just heard a lot of things about this particular Ardbeg release that sounds like it's a really good Ardbeg. Not super peaty, but still look fairly peaty because it is our bag, but it has a lot of nuances to it that sounds really interesting, and I just really would like to try that bottle. The third bottle on my list is Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Yeah, I know, this bottle is everywhere. It's actually fairly cheap, and it's, like I said, easy to get your hands on and everything. I could just go to the store right now and go get it, but it's on my dream list because it is outside what I would usually be willing to pay for a bottle of whiskey. Here in Pennsylvania, it's about $45. It is probably going to be going up in price. I've heard people saying that's going up in price around the country, not due to availability, but just due to inflation. Despite all that, it's still a bottle I would love to get because it sounds like it's just a perfect value whiskey. Number four is Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Now there's three of these every year and everyone reviews every single one of them as soon as they come out, if they get their hands on it. I've only seen one in store like one time and again, it's outside my price range, so I don't usually even try for it. But based on everything I've ever heard about any of these whiskeys, I really, really kind of want to try it. Like, it sounds really good. Number five, this is getting closer to a proper unicorn whiskey, and that's Stag Jr. Stag Jr. is from Buffalo Trace, so it is a tater bottle. I'm not super interested in the BTAC Stag, but for some reason, the Stag Jr. just calls me more. It's supposed to be really high proof. Uh, it's going to be barrel strength, and usually they are, like, up to hazmat level of being 140 plus in proof if you get the right bottle. I'm not really sure what to say about that one. I just really like to try it just to see what it's like to drink that high a proof of bottle from Buffalo Trace. Number six is Hibiki Harmony from Japan. This is pretty much everyone's go-to bottle of Japanese whiskey and the bottle looks beautiful. It looks like a gorgeous decanter, but I've never, I don't even think I've ever seen one in store before. So I would love to just see one, try it, maybe even get it on my shelf. Does it just a Great representation of Japanese whiskey. It's a blend of different distilleries, creating a harmony of the whiskey together. Number seven is Redbreast 12 Cast Strength. I've heard so many good things about Redbreast 12 from so many different people. I would love to try even just the Redbreast 12 all on its own, but now that they've released a Cast Strength version, I really want that bottle on my shelf someday, some way, somehow. Number eight may seem a little strange, but it's Talisker Dark Storm. I've had Talisker Storm from this distillery and I even had a bottle myself on the shelf that I got in clearance, which was awesome by the way. But specifically the Talisker Dark Storm, which is a sequel to that original Talisker Storm. Not only is it a sequel, but it's not actually readily available. It's a travel store exclusive. Is that what it's called? Travel store exclusive? Yeah, duty free? Yeah, duty, it's a duty free exclusive. So I can't get it without traveling and I haven't traveled through a duty free or cross country in quite some time, so. Let's go to Canada. Let's go to Canada. We're gonna go to Canada sometime soon. Hopefully, I need to renew my passport. So I would love to get Tasha Dark Storm. I don't know if they're still making it, if I'm honest. I know for when it, they were, it was a, a duty-free exclusive. I'm hoping it's still available and I can get it some at some point. Number nine is Lagavulin Offerman Edition, either the Guinness finish or the charred oak cask finish. The original one didn't really appeal to me a whole lot. It's just Offerman, but this one that's finished in Guinness cask, I love Guinness, I love stout. Would love to try that one. Actually, I have tried that one, so I can't even say that. I have tried it. It was good. I'd love to have a bottle. But the charred oak one also has me really intrigued because you're getting the barrel notes that you get kind of like in in bourbon, but in a peated, slightly peated, a little bit salty scotch whiskey. Yes, from the guy that plays Ron Salton. The last bottle on my list is actually a really local whiskey, and so you're not going to see it actually outside Pennsylvania. Sorry to everybody, uh, but... You have probably seen it in either Fred Minnick's reviews 
which he had put it in top, I want to say top 50 last year. And I think Whiskey Advocate has also covered it before. And that is Liberty Pole Peated Rye Cast Strength. I, I will agree with that one. I had the privilege yeah. to try this at the distillery with the distillers. And dear gracious, that may be the best whiskey. That No, not maybe. That is the best whiskey I have ever had. Those are strong words. Those are strong words. I've had... Was it Rip Van Winkle or Pappy Van so Winkle? He's given it four point nines across the board. Right, he's it's still not straight fives, but it's the best whiskey he's ever had. I gave you Pappy ones. Yeah, so Keith Cash gave you some Pappy ones, and I'm not gonna lie, it was great to have that experience, but I wasn't super impressed with it. This was way better than that. This was incredible. One of the things that Larry Pole does is they do a lower proof cask entry proof. One of the things Liverpool does is they have a lower cask entry proof. I like, I'm thinking what it is like a 108. So really low and you're getting a lot of the sugars and it's only about, I want to say a three or four year old whiskey. So if you have any disagreements with my 10, leave a comment down below, have your list, your own 10 top dream whiskeys that you want to have on your shelf. Like I said, though, I was challenged by Whiskey Cove. I'm challenging the whiskey nerd to do his top 10 dream whiskeys. And if he wants to do it with his girlfriend, that's fine too. And until next time, may the winds of fortune sail you.